1991. Birds and people are living together in seemingly perfect harmony. Until one day, a young man catches fire. This is Phoenix. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Game Week 31 knee jerk stream. Game Week 30 is over. We have eight game weeks left, and the next deadline is on Tuesday at six o'clock UK time. Also, keep in mind that in the UK and Ireland, and probably some other countries I'm not really sure about, um, the clocks have gone forward as well. So, some people are probably wondering why this is a little bit late because the clock, or early, I guess, actually, the clocks have gone forward. So, that's also uh, something to bear in mind for the deadline on Tuesday. We're going to talk about Game Week 30, everything that happened, injuries, the big scores from Isaac, Gordon, etc. And of course, look ahead to Game Week 31, where I think a lot of transfers will be made for a certain Mo Salah. And I suspect a lot of transfers are going to happen tonight, and I might do it as well. I'm just a little bit torn on which moves to make, so I'm going to talk about that too. How are we all doing? Uh, leave your scores in the chat. Some people are already doing that. 67 with Ward to play. Oh, is this FPL Challenge? Although still, there's no more games left, so I don't know how you would have players left. Uh, Andy has already brought Salah. Nope, I have not. Who's the best LaSalle's replacement? Free hit 34. Possibly a Man City defender. Possibly. Because Stones... I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but I, I got the feeling that Stones would probably miss 31 and probably 32. Although he was in the, he was in the squad today, wasn't he? Was he in the squad? He definitely traveled with the team. I think he was on the bench, wasn't he? Let me see here. I need to go and double check. Even though I watched the game, I just didn't pay attention enough to see if Stones is in the squad. Yeah, Stones was in the squad, but I don't think he's going to be back for 31 or 32. And Ake and Walker are going to be out for a little while. Now, how long that is, I don't know. But maybe someone like Diaz or Akanji or Vardio could be an option as a replacement. Depends how much money you've got left, of course. If you need someone in and around LaSalle's price, it, it does get quite tricky, to be honest with you. I feel like you've probably got to find some money from somewhere. Uh, my FPL team got more than my challenge team. That's exactly the same uh, for me as well. My FPL team got 64 points this week. My FPL challenge team got 57 or something like that. I, I, I tweeted this earlier. I think FPL challenge is going to be a good lesson in how tough it is for one week punts to work out you know all throughout the season people say well should i just go for this one week punt before i buy this other player that i want to keep long term and i think fpl challenge will show you how difficult it is to nail one week punts if you had a free hit every single week and no one else had one at all you probably still wouldn't win fpl that's how difficult it is and, and that's not me being boring and saying you can never have one week punts of course there's times when you should go for it 
that if you've got a choice between the one-week punt or that move that's probably just as good but also better long-term, you're probably better off going for the long-term move most of the time. Anyway, I'm sure some people did really well in FPL Challenge, but I, that was something I thought about earlier on. Um, going to... F so, sorry, I didn't really answer the best LaSalle's replacement. I'm actually not sure. Genuinely. Who, who are people with LaSalle's? Who are you buying? Man City defender, but that could be pain later on. The reason I like Man City is because you got free hit 34 and they've got a double game week later on. Like, who out of like, You could go for a Newcastle defender. Who wants a Newcastle defender right now? Yeah, Liveramento, maybe. Is he going to play more? Van Heck is not bad, but Brighton's double is not. I mean, none of the doubles later on are that good, I suppose. I, I don't think I would buy Bradley now. Because Trent could be back by about game week 33 ish. And long term, it's just. Because if someone's on free hit 34, they want a long term move, right? Yeah, Gusto maybe, but obviously he got injured as well. I don't know if Pochettino has said anything about him yet. I haven't seen anything about time frames. But yeah, otherwise I quite like Gusto. He's arguably the, the best option. Talk about Cunha. I don't think there's much to talk about. He wasn't in the squad, was he? Uh, Travis, going to free hitting 34, wildcard 36 and bench boost in 37. Thoughts on Pari, Madison and Watkins to Doggy, Meniz and Salah. Would have to do a minus eight to bring Salah in. I'm not sure about that. I, I could really want Salah this week, but it does, that doesn't sound great. Swapping one Spurs defender for another one and, and eight points to get Salah. You've not got better ways to do it. Also, if you're free hitting in 34, I mean, you could risk going out without Salah. Although I will say, after watching today's game, knowing he's got Sheffield United, I don't um, don't like it at all. Uh, Ross, Watkins, Richarlison, Van Dyke to Meniz, Salah, Bradley, minus four, only 0.1 million in the bank. Salah might go up in price tonight, by the way. Um, I, I don't hate that. But again, do you, actually, no, do you know what? I don't really like it that much. Like, getting rid of Watkins and Richarlison is fine. Getting rid of Van Dyke for Bradley? Like, look, I like Bradley. I've got him. I I'm lo I'm love the fact I get to play him this week. But... Long-term option, I'm just not sure he's it. Obviously, it depends on when Trent is back, but I, I, I don't know if I'd bring him in. I, I guess if you do something like Van Dyke to Bradley, what is your plan to change him later on? Um, sell Son or Foden. So I'm in that exact... Sure, I'm just going to bring my team up for next week rather than just uh, showing you this week. Just quickly for this week, uh, I got 64 points, which is enough for a green arrow, and I went from like 26k to just inside the top 24k. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest with you. Um, I, I always saw Game Week 30 as a bit of a damage limitation week, so I knew I wouldn't have... Obviously, I didn't have Salah, sorry. And my defense didn't look great. But in the end, actually, it went all right. Bradley got two bonus points, so he finished on four points. Gabriel got a clean sheet. If it wasn't for Neto, I might have had a double Bournemouth clean sheet as well. That was terrible, and I'm hoping he doesn't get dropped now. Anyway, uh, moving on to next week. And by the way, actually, second... Sorry, two out of the last three game weeks. Well, not game week 29, because obviously a free hit, but I've benched Foden and got away with it. And actually, it is an interesting fact for you. Foden has blanked in five of his last seven game weeks. Now, there has been some tough fixtures in there, to be fair. But uh, yeah, there you go. Fun fact for you. Yeah, for me next week, I'm, I'm in the exact same position, right? Do I sell Son or do I sell Foden? I, I don't think it can be... I don't think you can keep Foden over Son. And, and, and look, it's got nothing to do with what I just said about the five blanks in seven, because ultimately the fixtures are good for City. But Son's minutes are more secure. I, I'm not worried about what happened today, because it was Man City against Arsenal. He comes off after 60 minutes, fair enough. These things can happen. But more generally, Son, Son's not going to get rested at any point over the next few weeks. Foden could get a rest at some point. Son's also on penalties as well. I, I just don't think there's a good argument to keep Foden over Son. Unless... Money is a big factor. Like for me, for example, if I sell Son instead of Foden, I can keep Foden for Luton at home and get a uh, Liverpool defender in 33 and roll. If I if I sell Foden, I've still got to sell Son in 33 anyway. I only get him for two two weeks. But I I, I've, I don't think anyone can give me an argument to sell Son instead of Foden. I have got Bruno, yeah, but I need to sell two of them. I need to sell two of my midfielders this week. Uh, non salaroners owners were lucky, yeah. 
Yeah, pretty much. Salah should have had more points. I'm very glad he only got seven points. I mean, actually, my song captain plus Fernandez got 22 points. Salah captain plus... Because I would have captain Salah if I bought him in. Salah captain plus song got 24. But I would have had to take a hit to bring him in. So that's... You take four points off that, that's 20. But if I'd taken the hit, I would have played Foden instead of uh, having Watkins. So that's an extra two points. So if I'd done the hit to get Salah, I would have broken even, basically. I wouldn't have gained any points. So I'm pretty happy I didn't go through with it because now I'm going to get Salah a different way to what I would have done last week. If possible, by the way, I, I wouldn't even just want Son for West Ham away and Forest at home. I, if you could, I'd love to keep him for Newcastle away in 33 as well. Saka not a captain option. Lucky if he makes the game. Nah, come on. Saka's going to start against Lewin. Let's not go there. I, not great that he had to come off early, but but Arteta did just say it was fatigue. So he's going to start the next game. He always starts. Not cap. Oh, so it's because I've got him listed as captain. That doesn't matter. Right? I'm bringing in Salah and I'm going to captain him this week. So, oh, okay. Here's a good question. No, I'm just going to give my opinion and then try and not get into a big debate about it, right? Yes, I don't own Salah, but this is, in, as much as I can, this is an objective opinion. Or is it subjective? I don't know. I'm trying to be objective is what I'm trying to say. I wasn't watching the first 40 minutes-ish of that Liverpool game because I was out. And I saw all the stuff on Twitter about, you know, why isn't that a Salah assist? You know, it should have been a Salah assist. So I looked up the goal, expecting something really kind of close like oh yeah you can't really decide whether it was or wasn't but the first time i saw that guy i was thinking yeah that's just not a salah assist because salah heads the ball the def i can't remember which uh player it was was it veltman maybe from bright i can't remember which player but brighton player kicks it and because he kicks it the ball goes past van dyke which is where the ball was going to land and it goes straight into diaz's path so i i just don't think that's even close-ish to be an assist really so that's why that, that's what i presume why it didn't happen obviously i don't know fpl don't tell me they don't tell anyone it'd be nice for them to come out and explain it but that is why i think it wasn't an assist because if that brighton player doesn't kick the ball it falls at van dyke's feet not diaz and and that's it i, I don't think it was particularly close to be honest with you. i think there's been worse calls than that but like Sa Salah was inches, centimetres probably away from getting another assist for Diaz as well. I, how he didn't get more points today, I don't know. Absolutely got away with it. Arsenal players were knackered after today's game, seemed leggy. It's always going to be tiring playing against City, right? City dominated possession for a lot of that game. Just Foden, Watkins to Salah, Mateta seems easy. Well, if I was doing that, I would sell Fernandes rather than Foden. Salah was horrific today. What game were you watching? What's the higher priority transfer this week, Darwin or Haaland? Probably Haaland, I guess. But even a save landing into an attacker's path is given as the assist. Yeah, but that's because it's a rebound. Now, look, you, the, you can say the, the rules are flawed, that you don't agree with them, they should be changed, that's fine. But that's the reason why it's different. If someone shoots and the goalkeeper saves it, that's a rebound. That's why you get the assist. You just admitted you didn't watch half the game. No, I said I didn't watch the first 40 minutes. Halves are 45 minutes. I'm not, I'm not sure why you think you've like you've got me there. Like That's a bit, I got you. I, I, yeah, I didn't see the first 40 minutes. I was out. Oh, okay. I get it now because I said Salah wasn't awful. Okay, maybe he was terrible in the first 40 minutes. He didn't look that terrible afterwards to me. But there you go. You did get me. <laughs> Feel for Newcastle with the injuries that are piled up. There's a there's an account, Littleman's or something like that. It's like a Newcastle account. Um, they reckon there's another big injury that's going to get announced as well. I don't know who that might be. Okay. My move, so my moves, just to come back to it, it's either going to be Fernandez, Foden, Watkins, to Salah, Sarabia, and Darwin, minus four. I just bench Sarabia this week and have two Liverpool players for Sheffield United at home. Or I can get to the same amount of double game week players in game week 34, but without a four point hit. And that involves getting Diaz. 
So instead, I could do Watkins to Mateta and Fernandez to Salah and play 3-5-2 and just bench Mateta for a few weeks. And then in game week 33, I would do Son to Diaz. So that would be my third Liverpool player. And then I'd do Bradley to Van Dijk and I wouldn't have to take a hit. So that's my two options. Get Darwin this week and Sarabia and get rid of Foden. Or not take a minus four for Darwin and get Diaz later on, but not until 33. So it's either minus four this week and I wonder if I can... I can't do it with Diaz. Can I do it with Diaz? No, I'd have to sell Son now. I don't want to do that. Um, so it's either minus four Darwin and two Liverpool attackers today uh, against Sheffield United. Or it's no minus four, but I only have Salah attacker against Sheffield United. I think Diaz is good. I don't think he's necessarily better than Darwin for what it's worth. I just wonder whether I need to take that hit. It would mean not having Sarabia for the double, but I don't think that's a big issue necessarily. I was also talking to Praz today, and there, I could go for triple Liverpool attack. So in game week 33, rather than buying a Liverpool attacker, a defender, sorry, I could get rid of Bradley for eight Newry or someone like that, and then get Diaz and Darwin for the double and go triple Liverpool attack instead of one defender. The the problem is I need to do whatever moves I want to do later on have to be decided this game week. Like, unfortunately, I don't have a I don't have it my team isn't set up in a way where whichever move I go for later on, it's the same move this week. That's just not the case. And I kind of want to go tonight because Salah's probably going to rise in price. But I'm a little bit tempted. To just let him rise and then decide tomorrow or Tuesday. Thoughts on McAllister. He's now playing a more advanced role and has returned well recently. And look, if Salah wasn't on the pitch, he'd probably take penalties as well. But I don't... I just think with Liverpool, you've got Sheffield United at home, Man United away, Palace at home. Three good fixtures. Or at least two good ones and, and probably one good one as well against Man United. And then you've got a double... And Liverpool is so good, you just want the best three players. I just don't know if... Most people just don't need to get McAllister. Like, if, like, I guess the question is, if you get McAllister instead of Darwin or Diaz, what else is that enabling in your team? I'd want it to enable like a big other move, and I'm just not sure it's really there for most people. Jota to come back and put a spanner in the works ahead of the double game. I mean, he probably will, but even if Jota's back, you're going to want one of Diaz or Darwin, I think. If on a wild card, would you go triple Liverpool attack? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because I would only do it in game week 34. And that would be selling Haaland before I wild card him straight back in. Am I using my wild card in game week 37? Uh, nope, probably game week 35. Isaac or Darwin to transfer in free hit in 34. I mean, the best an the answer is probably Isaac. Because then you get him later on for the Dublin 37 as well. But I, I find it hard to buy Isaac instead of Darwin when you've got Sheffield United. Uh, best of sales replacement, Liveramento. Budget's 4.1 million. I mean, here, here's the thing. What are we expecting? Are we expecting Dan Byrne centre-back, Liveramento left-back now? Is that what we think is going to happen? Is that why Liveramento is a good option? I mean, Liveramento's flagged, <laughs> so I don't, I mean, the, the the truth is, I don't think there are many good 4.1 million players to go for. Van Hecker, but Brentford away, Arsenal home, Burnley away, Man City home, oh, terrible for defensive returns. I mean, I, I'd arguably try and free some money up from somewhere else. It, it probably is Liveramento at that price, if he's fit, or I guess you've got, um, you got Chris Richards, 3.9 million at Palace. But after Bournemouth away at City at home, Liverpool away, they do have the double in 34. And if you don't need to play him too often, he might be the one to go for. I just don't think you can buy Liveramento right now. Uh, minus eight or wild card. I think it depends. If you've got your free hit left, you could wild card. Otherwise, I'd probably um, just minus eight, I guess. Depends what moves you're making. The sells to Branthwaite. Sheffield United for bench boost game week 37. And it's not just that. Branthwaite also has some pretty good fixtures outside of it. 
A Newcastle away this week's not easy, but then it's Burnley at home 32, Forest at home 34, at, obviously the Dublin 34, sorry. Brentford at home in 35, Luton away 36. I really don't mind Jared Brantford but So that's fine if you've got the money, but for the person asking about 4.1, Brantford is 4.2. Unfortunately. Yeah, Lewis Hall, possibly. Yeah, I... I... <laughs> That Newcastle defence is just torn to bits. Madison to Palmer, free hit 34. Yes, but longer term, I would definitely prefer to have Palmer. I don't know if there's a massive need to get rid of Madison this week. Do the move like... No, I'm not going to make my moves during the stream. I need to give them a bit more thought. I, they're in, it's annoying me a bit that I've started thinking about this other route. I suspect I'm going to do the Darwin minus four move, because that was always my plan. I'm not going to bring in eight Nuri, because I'm dead end in 34, and I've already got two Arsenal defenders, and I'm probably going to get a Liverpool one as well, so that's my back three for the double. If you still had your free hit and bench moves, would you have played wildcard earlier than 35? If it needed it, yes. I mean, I think, like, basically, the... The wild card decision is the same as last week. Okay, if your team's well set up for 34, oh sorry, if your team looks okay for 31 to 33, then you could free hit 34, ben, uh, wild card 35, and then bench boost 37. If your team looks terrible right now and you really need a wild card, then you wild card now, you free hit 34, and you still bench boost 37. So whether you should wild card now really depends on how well you can, how well you can manage the next few weeks, basically. I really hope Darwin reaches the suspension threshold. It'd be so funny. Yeah, it wouldn't be ideal. But I hope, as long as nothing goes majorly wrong, I'd have a spare transfer to deal with it anyway. He's got to avoid getting two yellow cards in the next three games. So hopefully we're okay. If he gets a yellow against Sheffield United, that would be a nightmare. Do I think Darwin starts versus Sheffield United? Look, there's always going to be some doubts because it's a, not only is it a midweek game... It's one of the easiest games Liverpool are going to have all season. I think the fact that the title race is still w wide open means that, you know, Liverpool, Arsenal and City are going to want to rest as few players as possible. But there is a chance. If I had to put money on it, I would say that Darwin is more likely to start than not. Like 70% start, maybe, something like that. You have Zabani doubling too. Maybe you should go triple Liverpool attack. It still requires a hit, though, because I've got to get rid of Bradley to free up that spot. So, I, I don't know. Does Gordon go back to having eight yellows because of the second yellow? I think so, but someone in the chat might want to correct me on that. I bought in Salah this week for minus four. What do you suggest? Watkins to Darwin against Sheffield United or Huang to Sarabia against Burnley? Darwin will block me to get Luis Diaz later. I would do Watkins to Darwin, I think. Would you rather go Darwin and a cheap defender or Mateta, Cunha, and Van Dijk? It depends on the cheap defender. Like, if it was Darwin and a Palace defender and I didn't have to play the Palace defender until game week 34, I think I'd rather go that way around. Okay, yeah, so he's back to the eight yellow cards. That's how I thought it worked. Brandy versus Sheffield United is a potential of a 12-pointer. Yes, if he starts. Uh, there are some... There's going to be doubts around... Whether Bradley definitely starts. I think he will, but it's not a guarantee. The fact he played 90 minutes today, not necessarily ideal. He created a good few chances, though. I wouldn't be surprised if an attack and return comes. That's why he got the bonus points. Your doggy Porro or no Spurs defender on a wild card. I think I think I would go for one Spurs defender. Like Forrest at home in thirty two is pretty good. You can if you if you got free hit, then you free hit them out in thirty four. There's probably a double to come in thirty six, although it's not the best. Thirty seven double would be a little bit better, and then Sheffield United away last last uh, game week. It's been announced already. Lascelles out for nine months. Yes, but um, that Newcastle account I was kind of mentioning is almost making it sound like there's another injury to come. Bradley will be holding width. He'll still be getting forward, though. 
can I do my moves today? Salah and Darwin in. I have exact money. If I if I was pretty sure on my moves and I had and I was going to get priced out if there was a price change, I would move tonight. The, the difference for me is I've got a million left over for my moves. It's not even close. Like, oh, I don't really want to lose money. But if I do Fernandez, in fact, let me just hang on a sec. Yeah, let me just bring this screen up. If I do Fernandez, well, I'm on the wrong screen. <laughs> yeah, Fernandez to Salah. And then Watkins to, like, let's say Mateta. Like, I've got 0.3 million left over. So even if Salah goes up again, it's really not the end of the world. And if I do it the other way, so Darwin in and Foden out for Sarabia, I've got a million spare. So I, I don't, I could, if I wanted to, wait another day and then see. But it does look like Salah's going to go up in price. On um, Watkins, I actually, I thought I was going to lose money the first time he drops, but I'm not going to. I bought him for 8.5. He's gone up to 8. Point, oh, sorry, that's Saka. The same same for Watkins. I bought him 8.5. He's gone uh, he's gone up to nine. So if he drops to 8.9, I'll still be able to sell him for the same price. So Watkins isn't as much of a worry as as Salah going up in price is. There's part of me thinking that on Wildcard 35. I'm probably going to drop Salah anyway, so the money to go around, there'll be there'll be more than enough. But you just never know when you might need that cash. And because the deadline's on Tuesday, it feels a little bit better to go early. The other thing to look at as well, or think about, is the deadline's Tuesday, and Liverpool don't play till Thursday. We're not going to hear from Jurgen Klopp until Wednesday, so the deadline will already be gone. Um, so if you're thinking about going early, that's something to consider. These are the... These are the price changes or predicted price changes on Fantasy Football Hub. Um, so potentially going up tonight, Palmer, Ben White, Meniz, Salah, McAllister, and then Watkins could be going down. So it depends what point you're at. Obviously, if you bought Watkins at a different price, you might lose money if he goes down tonight. I'm just not sure whether to move just for that. It's just for 0.1 because the other players I'm thinking about like, Darwin Nunez is not that close to a price rise. Foden's not going to drop anytime soon. Fernandez might drop at some point. Um, who is it? Watkins. Yeah, Foden. That's it. So, I don't know. It is 0.1 million worth it? Maybe, maybe not. I suspect I will go tonight, but there's, there's part of me that thinks I should wait. How is there anyone left that doesn't own Palmer? I don't know. But I think Trippi will play midweek. We just can't be sure, can we? He wasn't even in the squad. I don't think he was in the squad, was he? Let me just double check. Like, let me check if I've got that right. I don't think he was. Someone confirmed that I'm correct. It's 0.2 if Watkins goes down. You can only lose 0.1. You can't lose 0.2 straight away. You already saw Watkins yesterday, yeah. Watkins, Watkins dropped Salah price wise could be two point swing, not point two. Yeah, if if Watkins going down is going to affect your selling value, but for me it's not the case. Watkins going down doesn't um, affect the selling value. I don't know. All along I've been thinking about getting Darwin in, so I think I should just probably do it. I've just got this worry now that Luis Diaz is going to do better than him. Okay, Trippy wasn't in the squad. Good, good, good. Will I bench Palmer for Solanke? I don't know if I would, to be honest. Is Semenu a decent option if you can't afford if I can't afford Salah? If you if you're using Semenu to fund Salah, yeah, I, I quite like Semenu. The only reason you're not hearing me talk about him for my own team is because I've already got three Bournemouth and I'm not getting rid of any of them. Is Harden essential before Wildcard thirty five? Uh nope. Diaz is clear of Darwin, though. It's not even close. I beg to differ. I think it's pretty close. Am I playing Haaland in double game week 34? Uh, right now I am. Will I do that by the time we get to the deadline? We'll have to wait and see. There is a chance I will sell Haaland for a different double game week striker because i might get to game week 34 and have a spare transfer and nothing to use it on 
But if I get to game week 34 and one of my double game week players is injured, I'll just obviously change them. And I'll just keep Haaland rather than selling. For, selling. I, I just don't think I want to necessarily sell Haaland for a hit. But as a one week punt before I wildcard, it is quite tempting. Who would I take as a second Arsenal attacker? If you could guarantee me that he keeps starting, have it. But if I was playing it safe, I'd probably just go Odegaard. I mean, Martinelli was back today, but I just think there's... like he He's probably still first choice, but there's a lot of competition or, or a lot of players that could play on, on that left-hand side. I'm not sure I would necessarily risk it. The new Liverpool manager will sell Darwin, I think. I, I think there's no chance of that happening. Zero chance. Am I worried about the Liverpool game next weekend? Well, I mean, Man United are terrible. That, look, yeah, Man United are terrible. The, the win against Liverpool in the FA Cup was great. It's actually one of the best matches. Like, the best... Yeah, one of the best matches I've watched in a long time. Just, just the drama, how it happened. But like, overall, Man United are terrible. And so, yeah, I'm worried about having to play Liverpool because they are good. I can't afford Mateta and Salah in for Gross and Watkins, but can afford Semenya. Yeah, get Semenya. Nothing like Mateta's not <laughs> some saviour. Um, Semenya is great. Harden looks so fed up of Doku. Harden wasn't great today, to be fair. It's very hard to say. <laughs> I'm not sure anyone was particularly. Am Bernardo Silva was actually really good, but overall, it was like it was just a stalemate, wasn't it? It was just two really good defenses. Quite boring. Darwin might rise tonight. Yeah, it's possible. I, I'm probably just going to do the minus four and just be at and just be done with it. What price do I think Palmer will be next season? He should be like eight, maybe even more, but it'll probably be like seven, seven point five. Because FPL don't. I do you know? What? I think he might be eight. He might. They might put him straight up. Uh, how did I do an FPL chat? I got like 50-something points. 57. Is Arsenal defence worth bringing in to bench 8 and Yuri Bradley? Well, you definitely don't want to bench Bradley. Um, I think Arsenal defence is still fairly good, but I don't know if you need to bring them in right now. I thought Brentford looked really... Brentford were really good. Like, it's one of those situations where you you definitely don't want to take credit away from Brentford and just say, well, Man United were terrible. I think it was def I think it was both. I think Brentford were really good and Man United are terrible. How many points do you think free hit would gain versus those without one in double game week 34? Not a huge amount, really. Five, ten points, possibly. The problem is most people not free hitting in 34, or a lot of people not free hitting have got a wild card in 35, so they can just dead end. Like I may I may only have 10 double game week players. A free hit might have 11. You know, a free hit player might have a slightly better goalkeeper than Neto. But overall, I don't think I'll be that far behind. Is Mbermo an option anytime soon? When he starts starting, I do think he is better than Vissa, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's soon. But obviously, Vissa's been playing all right. Would I have Saka on wildcard? I definitely would if I wasn't free hitting in 34. If I was free hitting in 34, you could maybe go with that. But I'd rather start with him and then move him on. Like I'd maybe start with Saka, then move him to Foden, possibly in 33, then free hit him out, and then have him ready for 35 onwards. So I think Trent said that he might be back for the Atalanta game. And that's just before game week 33. When is Regulon back? Um, he is back. Is it two more games or is he back now? Let me just double check. Yeah, he's back now. I think, he, I think it was just a one game suspension. Shall we keep Senesai or replace? You should, you should definitely get rid of Senesi. Uh, Sene yes, Senesai. That's how I used it. Senesi. You should probably get rid of him. I wouldn't get Kivior though. I don't think Kivior's minutes are 100% guaranteed. Tommy Asu came on for him today. He could start at some point. Why Mateta over Meniz? Just because he's got double game week in 34. And ultimately, whichever player I bring in like that to fund salary is going to get benched every week anyway until 34. 
If I take a minus four out for Han and I could keep wildcard 35, I also have free hit 34. Yeah, look, there's no right or wrong answer about whether you should wildcard now or save it till 35. I guess it all comes down to how many points behind you think you're going to be from now until 33. And if you think you can manage the next three weeks without a wild card, then I would do it. But I think free hit 34, wild card 35 could be really nice. Watkins to Semenya already got Solanke. I don't think there's anything wrong with having Semenya and Solanke. Like if, if that position is going to be a cheap forward, then what does it matter? It's not, it's not like you're buying Semenya instead of Darwin Nunez. No, no news that I've seen on Trippier, but someone feel free to correct me. Thoughts on Rico Lewis as a replacement for Lissette? I, I just don't think, even with all the, the Man City injuries, I'm not sure he's nailed enough. Like when Stones is back, which might not be that long, they could play what, Kanji, Stones, Diaz, Vardio? Would I bring in Cunha? Like, he wasn't even in the squad, right? I don't... I mean, again, I might have missed it, but I don't think... Was there anything said about when he might be back? Because even if he's back midweek, is he definitely going to be in the squad? Uh, sorry, is he going to be in the start at 11, I mean? Feels a little bit risky, right? I don't know what the injury update was. Also, maybe... Uh... Oh, no, actually, no. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Optimal front three for double game week 34. Darwin, Solanke plus one more. Um, a 3 five, 2 could be the way, yeah. Am I doing two videos tomorrow? Quite possibly. I've missed Steve's super chat, apparently. Want to do a similar minus four to you, but can't afford unless I sell Son instead of phone. Would you still do it? I think I probably would, yeah. I just have the luxury of not having to do that. Zabani Kelly or Mikalenko as a LaSalle's replacement. I think I'd rather have Mikalenko in the double. So how much do you have to play them before that? If, if you're going to bench them most weeks, I'd probably go for the Everton defender. I, I definitely wouldn't go for Kelly. How safe a pick is Darwin? I guess it depends when Jota is back. But um, I don't think Jota's going to be... I don't think he's going to be back for game week 32. Which means you've only got a couple more game weeks. And like if he's not got many minutes before, then it's probably going to be sub appearances. So hopefully, hopefully Darwin's fine. You've been watching Let's Talk FPL on Sunday nights for half a decade. Nice. Glad you've been here. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you haven't subscribed after half a decade, maybe now's the time. Would Edouard start to take minutes off Mateta when he's back? So, please tell me if I'm missing something with Crystal Palace, because I had this discussion with Praz earlier about Edouard. Edouard's been back. According to Transfer Market, he's been on the bench, and he keeps coming on. Now, ha Crystal Palace fans, has he been... Okay, now, now he's flagged as having a knee injury. But, like, he played nine minutes against Luton, 19 against Spurs, 65 against Burnley, 71 against Everton, uh, six against Chelsea, 10 against Brighton. Like, has he been suffering with an injury throughout that time? Because I feel like he has been there, even before the Forest game. So I, I think Mateta's first choice, no? And Mateta started every single game since game week 17. So before and after the new manager came in. So I'm not sure if I'm just reading the situation wrong, but I think Mateta's nailed from what we can see. I mean, it could change, right? I, I wouldn't consider him nailed like an ha a Haaland or something like that, but still. Uh, at least they could be back soon-ish, I think. Maybe, maybe game week 31, 32, something like that. I think he's probably one for free hitters to think about in 34. I don't know if I would go near him before that, to be honest with you. I think you just go Eze. Would be very FPL if Arsenal don't keep a clean sheet next week. It could, it could be the case. I'm hoping they do. I need to know more about Gusto, don't we all? 
Uh, member stream tomorrow, yeah, it should be. Tony versus Luton in 34 could outscore double game week players and fixtures around that are good. He could, yeah. Looking at the fixtures, who do you think wins the league? Probably Man City, because it's all, it's always Man City. But Liverpool definitely, like, I think, I think everyone's pointed out already. Arsenal have maybe got the trickiest fixtures to go out of all three. But they're not, and they've got to play all of Brighton, Villa, Chelsea, Spurs, Man United. All teams that, of course, they can beat. They're, 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 of course, Arsenal are better than all five of those teams. But they've got the potential to cause slip-ups. Whereas Man, City's t Man City also have to play Spurs away and Brighton away. And they've got to play Villa as well. But overall, their fixtures are probably a bit easier. And then with Liverpool, they've also got to play Man United in game week 32. And they've got to play Spurs and Villa. They've all got to play... I think... No, sorry. Yeah, City and Arsenal... No, wait, wait, wait. City and Man's... Let me just double check this now. Going all over the place here. Yeah, Arsenal and Liverpool have both got to play Man United. A lot of them have got to play Brighton and Villa as well, and Spurs. I just think you look at... Liverpool's fixture is pretty good. I say Man City, though. Just cause it's so boring, isn't it? It's always just Man City. I hope Man City don't win. They're a boring watch. It was a terrible game today. Yeah, Spurs, Spurs have got those awful fixtures in between. But because they got double game weeks, we like that for FPL. Oh, yeah, Palmer's Penenka. Love it. Well, I wouldn't want to see him do that for England. Well, if it goes in, I guess I don't care. But it's just that it's just that initial, you know, when you see it, when he does it, you're like, oh, my God, you haven't just done that. So cheeky. Now, you've got to get that spot on. If the goalkeeper doesn't dive early, you just look like an idiot. Sell or keep Ake. you got, you got to sell him, right? Would you do Madison to Saka? I'm on free hit 34. One free transfer. However, I have Gusto and Lascelles. I mean, to me, it sounds like you should... Like, if you're having to play one of Gusto or Lascelles and they're both... Well, Lascelles is definitely out. Gusto, we're not quite sure about yet. Did anyone see anything on Gusto? I don't know if Pochettino was asked about him after the game. I haven't seen anything. It feels like you should probably deal with him first. Potentially. Maguire is a Lascelles replacement. Um, I don't know if I would go Maguire. I mean, Varane, Varane went off, so he's possibly got an another... He's never available for very long. Lindelof also went off. So Maguire and Martinez could be the, the centre-back pairing, but for how long? Let's wait and see. I, I just think with Maguire, I, I don't know if... like. Part of the reason to buy him would be because of the double later on and the good fixtures. Is he still going to be playing then? Definitely. Maybe not. Jota is in light training. Is he? I'm not sure that's what Klopp said last week. I thought he said... I thought he said he was going to be involved in parts of training from this week. I guess that's not too dissimilar anyway. Gusto came off as precautionary, lunging for a challenge and not in a sprint. Apparently shouldn't be too bad. Neil. There we go. Okay, so so people with Gusto probably keeping hold of him. People without him probably not buying this week. I would say. Is Solanke too risky for captain this week? I, I just... Look, Solanke against Crystal Palace at home is fine. But when Saka's got Luton at home, Salah's got Sheffield United at home, it would take a brave person to go for Solanke. Foden plus Salah plus Mateta or Sarabia plus Salah plus Darwin. Sarabia and Darwin, I think. Like, I think Foden's great for what it's worth, but I don't think he's so good that I would go Mateta instead. Pickford in double game at 34 is good, yeah? Opportunity for the Maguire bullet header. Not going to be there, I'm afraid. I mean, look, Man United are terrible. Um, and for FPL purposes, I'm looking forward to selling Fernandez this week. But I will be back for Man United players in game week 35. And I will almost certainly have a triple up of Man United players. And I think there's options. Hoyland, Fernandez, Garnacho, Rashford, Dallow, Anana. Three of those. 
He's no harm until wildcard 30 fine. Or wildcard 35 fine. Yes. Saka rest net. When, when does Saka ever get rested? It never happens. So he'll start against Luton. And if they're 4-0 up, he'll come off early. And then he'll start against Brighton. And I would say after Brighton, there's like eight days till the next game, but they've probably got Champions League at some... Yeah, they will have Champions League. Yeah, look, Man United are bad, but they also have, from 35, Burnley at home, Palace away, double game week of Arsenal and Newcastle both at home, then Brighton away. And it's not like you have to play all three Man United players every week either. Like You're going to have options to bench them too. And we're not worried seeing how Chelsea and Man United have been in the easier games. Yeah, but I'm still gonna still gonna go for it. Like I'm never gonna stop back in fixtures at the end of the day. If Salah had the like, look, if Salah had, sorry, if Liverpool had a double game week in 37 as well, and I was buying Man United players instead of Liverpool ones, then yeah, even I'd call myself crazy. But that's not the case. And I think um, I think it'll be fine from uh, from from game week 35. But we'll see. I, I think at, at this point, we're just speculating about who gets picked in four game weeks' time. It doesn't really matter, does it? Because most people wildcard in the 35 are just dead ending. And so you know, we don't even really need to think about it. I might get to 35 and just not get Man United players at all. Gross, Watkins, Foden, to Salah, Darwin, Sarabia, minus eight. I, I guess so. I don't love that it's a minus eight, though. Anyone annoyed at the different penalty rules? Chelsea versus everyone else. The, um... Yeah, was that, was was the, the Chelsea penalty this week? That was the foul on Mudrick, right? Or was that, was that another game? I think it was this weekend, right? It was never a penalty. Madness, honestly. I don't understand, one, how it was given, and two, how it wasn't overturned. I swear Spurs haven't had a penalty all season. They definitely have had one, because I'm pretty sure Son took it. And that's how we knew he's on penalties now, for sure. Yeah, and then get to get sent off. Oh, my God, it was terrible. Okay, it's given. Fair enough, right? In real time, things get missed. But surely that was enough to overturn. It was crazy. How risky is going for Canate? I wouldn't do it. He didn't even start today. Like, Canate, I just don't think can play multiple games in a row when you've got midweek games. Simple as that. I just, I just don't think. Like honestly, if you're going for an, if you're going for a Liverpool defender, it has to be Van Dijk. You could take a risk on Bradley if you want to, but long term, definitely not an option, in my opinion. The problem with dead ending policy is that you could potentially lose value on players like Son only to buy him back the next week. I agree, yes, but points are s so. You're right, and this is something I thought about because I probably won't sell Palmer for that exact reason. Because Palmer's got Arsenal away in 34, and I'm going to bench him. So potentially, I could sell him. But you're right. Money is potentially going to be tight. Um, and if we look at Palmer, I bought him at 4.9. He's now 5.8. 0 0.5 million it would cost me to buy him back. Not going to happen. But with Son, it's only a 0.3 million difference. And because he's blanking in 34, people will sell him. So he will drop in price probably by 0.1. And then suddenly it's a 0 0.2 difference. And obviously I'm hoping to get enough points in Game Week 34 to cover that. So I agree you should think about that, but it shouldn't be the only deciding factor, the fact you're going to lose money. Because points are obviously important. And also, there's a high chance I'm going to go without Salah in Game Week 35 anyway, so there'll be enough money to go around. I think it's one of those penalties that VAR doesn't change either decision. Yeah, I, the thing is, I don't think it was one of those. I know you get a lot of them where, okay, it probably shouldn't have been a penalty, but VAR is never going to overturn it and vice versa. But I feel like that one on Mudrick was just not a penalty at all. And like, I just don't get how that can't be overturned. So I, I don't think it was one of those where, okay, they're never going to overturn it. I think they should have overturned it. 
Watching Salah was scary as a non-owner, have avoided it until after Man United in the hopes he gets rested from the start against Sheffield Honestly, I think there's almost no chance Salah gets rested against Sheffield United. Like, I know they've got that Man United game. So, so obviously, Liverpool play today. Their next game's on Thursday. They play Man United on Sunday. So, obviously, they're going to want players fit for that game. So it's going to be a tougher game, right? It's away from home as well. But you can start players against Sheffield United then bring them off early. So, Salah getting 90 minutes against Sheffield United is probably not very high. But he surely starts. Uh, Palmer was 5 million, yeah, at the start of the season. But he dropped in price. Um, so I got him at 4.9, which is crazy now. One of the best things about Wildcard 10. Felt like such a penalty merchant owning both Gordon and Nizat this week. Look, penalty takers are good. You know, I got that 11 pointer from Fernandez. That was just from a penalty. Antonio 2 returns in 2. Haaland who? Haaland's not been great, but let's see against Villa. And then Palace. And then Luton. How much do you think Klopp will factor in goal difference in his start slash substitution decisions? No, I, th I think... Let me just... I'm just bringing up the table here. Liverpool's goal difference is 40. C City's is 35. So Liverpool are 5 clear of City, but they're 6 behind Arsenal. I would I would imagine that things like that are definitely taken into account. But only where like it makes sense. Like, I don't know, let's say you're let's say Liverpool four 0 up at half time against Sheffield United. There's a decision to be made at half time. Do you give those some of the, your key players forty five minutes off? Or do you go for more goals just in case goal difference is important at the end of the season? And if you're 4-0 up in 45 minutes, maybe you give them another 10, 15 minutes after half time. But if you're, yeah, yeah, basically something like that, right? So I guess it all depends on how many minutes. But if you if you score the fourth goal in the 70th minute, do you give them another 20? No, you probably just take them off because, yes, you want more goals, but you also want to win the next game. So I think it really depends on the, the state of the game, basically. Game state. Like, at what point are they? Yeah, but I, I think that's why I think Salah will start. It'll just come off early. So if the plan, for example, is to give Salah 65, 70 minutes if they're winning, I don't think Klopp will say, do you know what? We'll just give him the full 90 to get a couple more goals. I just don't think they would do that. But I do think it's something they'll they'll be thinking about. Any attacker that starts that game for Liverpool has got a chance coming off early. But I still think because it's Sheffield United, I want to be involved and have Salah and have Darwin. Uh, start Semenya or Palmer. I, I just don't think... There's not many players I would play ahead of Palmer at the moment, I don't think, even against Man United. I mean, Man United defence is terrible anyway. I don't think Sheffield United or Luton the whipping boys anymore. They're two of the worst teams in the league. Like, they're definitely who we should be targeting. Salah never looked tired today. He can easily play 80-85 against Sheffield United. Yeah, of course he can. But that's probably not what's going to happen. And the turnaround time's quite quick as well. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be doing a separate wildcard video this week because there's only two days to the deadline. So lots of questions about is there any news about... I haven't seen any news about Gusto or Cunha. Not like confirmed news straight from the manager's mouth. Keep or sell Bowen? I mean, it depends who you're selling him for. I, I discussed Bowen last week on transfer tips, saying if you've got a spare transfer, get rid of him. But if you don't, I don't think he needs to be rushed out of your team. West Ham, uh, sorry, Spurs at home this week. And then in 30, I think it's Newcastle away then in 32. Oh, sorry, Wolves away. Bowen's okay for those two games. Like if it's going to take a minus four to get rid of him, I would just hold on to him. Unless it's for Salah, of course. Is it time for triple Liverpool over triple Man City? I mean, yeah, it probably has been for a while. No, actually, it hasn't. That's not true. But yes, because they double in 34.
what differences would you make from your Game Week 30 and Game Week 31 wildcard draft? Well, I would definitely wouldn't go for Gusto and Lascelles right now. That's for sure. Uh, is Watkins a must sell? No, but I think he probably makes sense to sell for a lot of people. One, one thing on Gusto, by the way, um, Chelsea don't play until Thursday. So you're probably not going to hear from Pochettino. It doesn't mean we won't get any news, but it's just less likely. Will I be playing Sarabia before game week 34? Yes, maybe in game week 33. Because he'll have Nottingham Forest away, and I'll probably have to bring in Eze that week. And so I'll probably play Sarabia. Game week 33 is going to be a weird one for me. Where I might have to sell Son to Eze and then bench Eze and play Sarabia. Which, i got to be honest, does not feel great. But I don't think there's a good way around it for me. The only real way around it would be to make a transfer in game week 32. But there's going to be nothing I need to do. And I could change the goalkeeper, I guess. But I'm not sure that's a massive priority for me. Maybe I could buy Pickford in game week 32. Maybe I could buy Pickford for Neto. And then rolling 33 instead. And then 34, do Son to Eze. But the thing is, it's tricky for my team because if I get to game week 33 and Trent looks like he's going to start against Palace or get minutes, then I might not want to play Bradley, in which case I'd rather sell him. And so to sell him, I would need the money from selling Son. So it's a bit of a weird situation. So I might play Sarabia in game week 33, possibly. And, that, and, and that's one of the problems, I guess, with, not, with dead ending instead of free hit. And you've kind of got to make decisions like that at times when you don't necessarily want to. But that, is a, that is something I should consider. Not even, in fact, I wouldn't even sell Neto, I guess. I'd sell Ariola if I had the money, which I would. So I could do Ariola to Pickford. And just have Neto as backup. But then I'd have to play Neto against Man United at home. Or Pickford. Pickford against Chelsea away in 33. But I could keep Ariola and play him against Warzone. But Ariola's flagged as well. It's too, too much to think about. Watkin, uh, Foden, Watkins to Salah, Darwin for free, or Garnacho, Watkins, Pau Torres to Salah, Mateta, Richards for a hit. I'm so confused. To save selling, I would definitely do the Foden, Watkins move. I don't even get what you're gaining in the second one. Oh, because you're getting to sell Garnacho instead of Foden. No, I would just sell Foden and not take the hit and get Darwin instead of Mateta. I think that's obvious. I think. It is for me anyway. How dangerous would it be to go without Son after 34? Those fixtures don't look appealing at all. I think they look really appealing. Like, okay, Arsenal at home is not easy. But then you got you potentially got Liverpool away, Chelsea away. So you've got an extra fixture, even though they're both away from home. Then you've got another double of Burnley at home, City at home. And then you've got Sheffield United away last day of the season for a player that never gets rotated. Spurs aren't in Europe. They're chasing European spots. He's on penalties. He always plays 80 to 90 minutes. I think Son's great. Like, if you were... Let's just say that all team, And I know this is impossible, obviously. But all teams had the same fixtures from now until game week 38. So they're all playing Sheffield United, Luton at home, Everton at home, Fulham at home. Who would be your top three FPL picks? Because I think it would be Sal Salah and Haaland, top two. And then what, Saka or Son? Probably. Palmer, maybe. I just think Son is he's one of the best picks in the game. And yes, the extra fixtures are against tougher teams, but it's still extra minutes for him. And he's on penalties. Even though, as someone pointed out earlier, Spurs never get any. I think, like, put it this way, unless he's injured, there is no way I won't have Son on wildcard 35. Like, not, not a chance. He'll be one of the first names in the squad. 
Am I keeping Saka to the end of the season? Probably not. All right, let me see if there's anything else I've not already answered. I would say probably <laughs> Return of the King, Pickford, yeah. I, I don't think it's worth it for me, but I could consider it. But, you know, is it worth a transfer to have Pickford instead of Neto for the double? Probably not. Should I sell Fo Son or Foden salad? So I've definitely done this question already, but if you can afford it, I would definitely sell Foden. No, no hesitation on that whatsoever. All right, I'm going to leave that one there. If you've enjoyed that, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on podcasts, as always, make sure to rate five stars. I'll be back tomorrow, probably with a couple of videos. Not sure which ones yet. And then team selection on Tuesday, probably. Then deadline stream on Tuesday as well. So this is going to turn around pretty quickly. So make sure you're checking out all that if you haven't already. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Enjoy your Easter eggs. And um, I'll catch you again soon. Thanks for watching.